iHeartRadio. To receive an instant notification each time I upload, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. Have you ever encountered a relic so enigmatic that it has confounded scientists, historians, and theologians alike for centuries? A piece of cloth that ignites fierce debate, with some proclaiming it as a sacred artifact and others dismissing it as a medieval forgery. I'm referring to the Shroud of Turin. What if modern science has unearthed groundbreaking evidence that challenges everything we thought we knew? This is not merely a story about an ancient piece of linen, it's about history, mystery, and possibly the most significant artifact linked to the life of Jesus Christ. Let's delve into this enigma together. The date is October 13, 1988, when science and faith collide. On this day, a small section of the Shroud of Turin was cut for carbon-14 testing, a pivotal moment that sent shockwaves across the world. The results? The cloth was supposedly dated between 1260 and 1390, seemingly discrediting the notion that it was the burial cloth of Christ. But what if the test was flawed from the start? Years later, researchers discovered that the sample used to test came from a section that had been repaired from fire damage. This revelation challenges the very foundation of the carbon-14 results. Could it mean that the shroud is far older than previously thought? In the wake of this discovery, the new studies emerged, offering compelling evidence that contradicts the medieval dating. One of the most striking findings came from an unlikely source, plant particles. Embedded in the shroud were pollen grains from species native to Jerusalem. These plants bloomed in the spring, aligning with the time of Christ's crucifixion. Even more astonishing are the particles that date back to the first century. The question then arises, how could first century pollen from Jerusalem be found on a cloth that was supposedly created in medieval Europe? This discovery adds weight to the argument that the shroud may indeed have originated during the time of Christ. But the evidence doesn't stop there. The carbon-14 results are questionable. Where did the shroud come from? Where did it truly come from? Recent research has provided even more clues. Scientists have analyzed the flax fibers that were used to weave the shroud. They determined that the material likely originated in the Middle East, specifically in the Western Levant, a region that includes modern-day Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria. Whoa. This finding supports the theory that the shroud is not a European creation, but rather an artifact from the ancient Near East. Further bolstering the theory are traces of the coins that are found on the shroud. This aligns with a burial custom practiced in second century Judea. Additionally, the style of the wounds depicted on the cloth, including the crown of thorns, is consistent with methods of crucifixion used in the Levant, not Europe. The evidence continues to build, suggesting that the shroud may indeed date back nearly 2,000 years. Given these revelations, skepticism around the 1988 carbon-14 test group, in response, researchers turned to a more advanced method wide-angle x-ray scattering, or waxes. Unlike carbon-14 testing, waxes does not destroy the sample. Instead, it examines the chemical structure of the fibers to determine their age with incredible precision. The results? Waxes analysis indicated that the shroud likely dates to the first century. This finding aligns with the presence of Jerusalem-specific soil and pollen on the cloth, suggesting it originated from the Middle East during the time of Christ. These advanced techniques are telling us a vastly different story than the flawed carbon-14 test, forcing us to reconsider the Shroud's history. But perhaps the most perplexing aspect of the Shroud is the image itself. How was it formed? It's not painted, it's not drawn. There has not been any scientific explanation that has fully accounted for its creation. Hmm. Italian researchers 
from the National Agency for New Technologies have proposed a startling theory. The image may have resulted from a rapid dematerialization of the body leaving behind a lasting imprint. They were able to replicate a similar image on a small piece of cloth using X-ray radiation, though on a much smaller scale. To replicate the shroud's image, they estimated that it would require billions of watts of ultraviolet light, far beyond what any known technology could produce even today. John Jackson, a leading researcher from the Shroud of Turin Research Project, calculated that such a burst of radiation would generate heat intense enough to vaporize the cloth, and yet, the shroud shows no sign of heat damage. This raises profound questions. How could such an image have formed without destroying the fabric? Some researchers believe the shroud was created under conditions that science cannot yet fully explain. Whether this phenomenon was natural or supernatural or a result of some lost ancient technology, it remains one of history's most confounding mysteries. The Shroud of Turin continues to captivate and baffle those who study it, whether viewed as a holy relic or a historical enigma. It remains a mystery that resists definitive explanation with first century plant particles cutting edge waxes analysis and perplexing image formation. The evidence points to a much older and more significant artifact than the medieval carbon 14 suggests. So where do you stand? Is the Shroud of Turin a miraculous relic or an ancient artifact with an extraordinary past? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. If this exploration of one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries intrigued you, don't forget to hit that like button, share it, and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the unknown. Stay curious, and together, let's keep unraveling the mysteries of our world. For Headlines with a Voice, I am Felicia Lockhart.